Bristol treated foster carers unfairly and did not always act in the best interests of children, according to an independent report. It follows complaints from foster carers that children had been taken away from them without good reason. In a moment, we'll hear from the Director of Children's Services at Norfolk County Council, but first, this from our health reporter, Nikki Fox. Pamela Hoskins fostered for Norfolk County Council for five years. She had to stop because of an unproven allegation against her. The child was taken from her and that was the end of her fostering career. She's been waiting for the review to investigate how foster carers were treated for three years. They ought to put it in hands of people who know what they're doing. I don't think they, like I say, I think the whole thing should be disbanded and reset up again. I mean, the government have threatened to take it over and deal with the situation. I think they should just come in and do it. The Independent Review investigated eight cases over a nine-year period to 2014. Many we can't report, but the review's highly critical. In one case, it found the decision to remove the children was not properly justified and was distressing. In another case involving a family who'd fostered 20 children, the council investigated a child being left alone. The review found a failure to follow procedures, poor recording and inadequate communication. A third placement lasted for three years when it was supposed to last nine months. The report said the supervision from the fostering team was wholly inadequate and it placed an unacceptable strain on the carers. Particularly for the, uh, the people involved, the eight cases we looked at, the foster carers and the children involved, it's very concerning and will have caused them a lot of grief. So in that extent, it is damning. But in the context of all the social work we've done, um, it's not putting the whole of the county council in that frame of being damned. But there are more than a dozen other cases that are still to be looked at. Ray Bury represents the Norfolk Foster Care Association. He says it's vital these families get answers. These poor carers, these young people, have, have been pushed aside and they've just spent the best part of a year and a half investigating eight cases. A hundred thousand pounds of taxpayers' money being spent to investigate eight cases. How can that be fair? MP Norman Lamb is considering raising the issue with the Education Select Committee. The council wants to put right past mistakes, but as the report suggests, it has work to do to restore its credibility. Nikki Fox, BBC Look East. Well, Michael Rosen became Director of Children's Services at Norfolk County Council a year ago. I asked him for his reaction to the report. Was it what he was expecting? It's, it's painful for the individual people involved and I'm glad that we've been able to have that review and bring their issues forward and give them some resolution through this process. But actually, you know, I think we all knew that things weren't right with, with, with Children's Services during that period. What's important is what we've done to put it right. But in six out of eight cases considered under this report, the council was found not to have treated carers fairly or not to have acted in the interests of, of children. I mean, how could that have happened? I think that that is typical of an organisation that found itself in the position that Norfolk did when it was inspected in 2013. So, but these are you social know, workers who should I've, always act in the interests of children yes, and be looking and after I the think, people who are working And absolutely, for them. I think that was absolutely their motivation. I would suggest that every individual instance that social worker felt they were doing the right thing for that child and I don't believe anyone acted out of any, any poor motives. I think that what, what you have is a situation where, as the report identifies, there weren't clear policies and procedures, they weren't clearly understood by all staff. Um, those are the sorts of issues in which individual poor decisions can be made by people who are responding to an allegation. So something serious, potentially, for a child, and their immediate reaction is, let's get that child to a safe place, but without any um, investigation, they're, they are ruining people's lives, aren't they? They're putting a cloud of suspicion over the foster carers and potentially ruining the child's life by taking them out of a family where they might well have been happy. And that's why we are doing things differently now, because we are reflecting on our practice at the time and saying that on balance uh, in these cases, and, and, you know, to be, again, fair to people, these are eight cases. Um, I don't think you can use them as a barometer of the whole service. Although there are a lot of families that have told us that they feel they should have been involved in this process because they too felt poorly treated and they haven't been allowed to take part. Um, well, I'm not sure that's the case. Uh, we set some parameters. We were more than happy for people to be involved. Um, Norfolk Foster Care Association didn't feel able to recommend to its members that they do so until very late in the day. 
um, at which point, unfortunately, um, we would begin to run out of time for the review. So just to clarify, if there are families who still want to have their cases considered, they should come directly to you? Absolutely. If you come forward and you feel we didn't do right by you in the past, we will take a fresh look at that. And if we are of the mind that that is right, then we will offer you an apology, as we've done to the families involved here, and we will look at compensation where that's appropriate. And an apology is, is definitely a start, but do you agree that actually in some of these cases people's lives have been really devastated by what's happened? I think it's always hard to measure the emotional impact of these things on people, and sometimes it doesn't become apparent till, till further, further down the line. Well, I'm keen to do the right thing by children, keen to do the right thing by foster carers. I don't set any time limits and barriers on that. Are you worried about long-term damage to the reputation of the council because of this, and, and the fact that other people might be put off coming forward to be foster parents because of this? I would be disappointed if that was the impact. I think people need to remember that this is an inquiry carried out now into things that happened between 2005 and 2014. We are not the same council, we are not the same children's services that uh, made these decisions. Michael Rosen, thank you very much. Thank you.